What's up fam? I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You're on my show. We do every single Wednesday for all you competitors out there competing. It's called First Call Outs and today we're going to talk about wellness and some differences about wellness physiques that you really got to understand if you're planning to compete in wellness. Trust me, you want to watch this video. It will be a game changer for you when you actually get to stage. Do me a favor, everybody watching, please subscribe to the channel and then share out the video. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You are on the Iron Palace. Alright, so as you guys know, NPC Wellness, you know, we had our launch off of this division happen earlier this year, and then it kind of all has been short cut because of the pandemic going on, obviously. You know, shows have quit happening, a lot of shows got canceled, a lot of shows got postponed, and with that, there's been a lot of women that were very, very excited to be competing in this division that have yet to do so because we had such a small amount of shows that actually happened in the beginning of the year that you could have even have been a part of if you were competing in wellness, okay? Now, we do have some wellness pros now. You know, the Arnold Amateur was our first wellness pro card out there, and some cool stuff has gone on in other places, but the point is, guess what? And no matter when this thing's over, shows will be back, the stage will return, and all of you ladies out there that are trying to get ready for wellness, you want to make sure you're doing the right thing, and you also understand you know, where your physique's going to fit in, and you, there's some red flags and things I've seen on social media and stuff people have asked me that makes me think a lot of women right now still don't 100% understand this criteria or what's going on. So I want to tell you a little bit more about it and also tell you what the main red flag issue I've seen and I've heard and I know a lot of uh, competitors are going to make a mistake if they don't understand this difference. <music> So a quick overview, I've done a ton and ton of videos on wellness, so I strongly encourage if you are just laying on my channel for the first time, or you're watching this and you're interested in wellness, go look at my wellness videos. There's so many I've done, like literally since they announced the division to now where I cover a lot more stuff for you. But let's just talk for a second, a general overview of the wellness physique. Now, the wellness physique is a physique that is similar to bikini in a lot of ways, and also not similar to bikini in a lot of ways, okay? In a sense, it's almost an asymmetrical type of bikini where we're talking about the lower body being more dominant than the upper body, okay? It's like one of the, it is actually the only division where we have, it's not all about symmetry upper to lower, right? That's generally what we see in every other division, especially in bikini, the, you know, the judges are looking, shoulder, waist, hitch, you know, hip, glute, all that ratios. Well, in wellness, they actually want want to see you be asymmetrical compared to your upper body. They want to see your lower body be far more developed and that's the main difference. I've done a lot of comparison posts and pictures and things like that over on my Instagram at TeamFFLEX. If you want to see some of those, it kind of outlines it better for you. Um, but basically what we're talking about is, you know, the shoulders being mostly on par with current bikini. We got, you know, conditioning wise being the same as current bikini. You don't have to be more conditioned or anything like that. What you do need to have in wellness is this dominant lower body and this comes from you know way more development in the glutes way more development in the legs in general hamstrings quads all around just this type of physique where the legs are so much more developed than in bikini. If you were to take that wellness physique to bikini, you would score down, you'd probably place dead last because it's not a bikini physique at all, okay? And so that's one thing that you know I wanna make clear and people understand, I know a lot of people that don't understand the criteria that well are like, well, what's the real difference here? You know, it's just bikini girls with bigger legs, but really it's not. And one of the biggest issues that I've seen 
all kinds of people talking about, even people that say they want to compete in wellness. I've even seen some coaches saying this months ago that, you know, it was just a class that was for, you know, less conditioned bikini girls, which is not true, okay? And so what I want to talk about today is this difference in the lower body dominance. Now, there are two ways you can be lower body dominant as a human being in general, but also as a female competitor, okay? You can have a lower body dominance because you have a lot of lower body fat, okay? Understand what I just said. You can have lower body dominance because you have a lot more lower body fat. That would not be ideal to come and compete in wellness with. You can also have lower body dominance because of muscular development, okay? You can have lower body dominance because of muscular development, the amount that you have built the muscles, and that is what wellness is. Now, what I've seen conflicting, and a lot of even coaches saying this, is you know, like, oh, they made wellness for the bikini girls that can't get their legs lean enough. No, it's not true. And it, all a bunch of competitors that are ladies, I've seen them on Instagram and stuff like that talking about, you know, that they're going to be in this division because they carry more lower body fat. And no, that's not what you need to be doing in wellness, okay? I'm training a lot of women for wellness and we're not going to bring that look at all. And that's not the look that any of the judges have been promoting or talking about Sandy Williamson. Nobody's been talking about that being the thing. This is not a less conditioned version of bikini at all and it's not about bringing lower body dominance because of lower body fat and so what I think you all need to understand if you're a competitor in wellness right now or you're preparing to compete in wellness in other words and you know you're in this kind of quarantine mode in this looming mode where you're waiting to get back to the gym waiting for shows to fire up again you got to start to prioritize the fact that you need to have a very dominant lower body muscular wise not body fat wise because in reality you're gonna have to bring the same condition as bikini and while that's not striated that's not chiseled hard it is conditioned and you still have to have that in wellness if you want to compete in wellness now where it gets more difficult to even be a wellness competitor is the amount of muscle that you have to have it is a lot more muscle in the lower body you need to be lean enough to compete and also have massive amounts of muscle showing the shape and the aesthetic that you need to have to do wellness and that's not going to come from body fat okay if you come into wellness with too much lower body fat and you think that that's what makes you more dominant, well, you're going to get scored down because you're not going to be at the right level of conditioning. Judges are not even going to be able to see the muscularity and they're not going to mistake body fat for muscles in any turn of the coin. If there's anything we saw at the Arnold, it was that now we have a standard, right? They really took all those tops at the Arnold and they said, this is our standard here for wellness right now and they gave out that pro card to uh, the winner there and that pretty Pretty much sets the tone exactly. I've heard Sandy and I've heard Becky and I've heard other top judges say, hey, you know, that is the ideal wellness physique. That is what everybody should be looking for. You know, the shoulders to come into the waist to that lower body dominance, which is key, and that's what they're looking for, okay? And you really gotta understand the competitor. It's not about, you know, being dominant because of body fat. It's gonna score you down. Don't be mistaken. Don't get the wrong idea. Train your legs really, really hard. So let me give you a few tips for training just to wrap this video. Up. One, two, three. We just talked about the fact you got to be lower body dominant in wellness. This requires a lot of muscle, okay? And I'm going to give you some generic, you know, tips here that you can use if you're training for wellness through quarantine and, you know, when gyms come back, whenever you're trying to compete, some stuff you want to take into consideration because a lot of people are very lost. We've been getting a ton of questions from bikini competitors transitioning to wellness. Hey, do we train the same? Do we do the same exercise? Do we do the same splits? No, you can't, okay? You cannot. You should not be doing that. Wellness, you're going to have to train differently than you do 
do for bikini. As much as the physiques are similar, they're also very different. Like I just stated, you need a dramatic amount of more muscle on the lower body than you have in bikini. And so therefore, if you take your bikini training program and you think somehow you're just going to turn that into a wellness physique, well, good luck. You're going to be subpar in both categories. You're not going to be your best bikini competitor and you're not going to be your best wellness competitor because basically you're not training to fit either division the right way, okay? And so you can't just take your bikini program and turn it into a wellness program. You have to have a different training program. And I'll tell you what I've been doing. I have most of the wellness women that I'm coaching doing very, very high volume, um, you know, compound exercises two days a week, sometimes three days a week, lower body, where we are going on full attack mode. We're doing five sets of stuff, hard stuff, tempo reps, pause reps, you know, basically really just taxing these muscles as much as we can. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll split this up so they're doing quads, you know, maybe one day and then glutes and hams another day and maybe another glute day. It's all different for everybody, every physique. I'm just giving you some ideas, some potential things you could try or know if you're on the right track in other words, but you really got to hit the leg so hard, very intensely to get them to get the size need to be for wellness and that's just the way it is. And now let's not forget this. Here's a spot that a lot of wellness competitors are also getting themselves in. Um, they're overtraining. They think that, okay, I need to build my glutes, uh, train them every day. I need to build my hamstrings, my quads, train them every day. Well, the truth is, ladies and gents, the way you build a muscle is you tax it. You got to put some tension, some load, you know, put some volume into it. And then you got to let it actually grow. That doesn't happen in the gym. Every time we go into the gym, we lift the weight we do any exercise, we're actually breaking down muscle fibers, okay? You're physically actually breaking down muscle fibers so that then they will respond and they will grow and they will come back and they will, in other words, hypertrophy and get better, stronger, bigger, etc. But that's the variable you have to have is the recovery. So if you're constantly, let's say, taxing, you know, you're training glutes every day, trying to get them to grow, well, really what you're doing is you're actually probably wasting that muscle away because you're not allowing it to recover and you're consistently breaking it down all the time. I rarely ever have even any of my wellness competitors doing any muscle three days a week, okay? And that's because of the factor that the growth comes from the recovery. If we train really, really hard and very intensely in the gym with high reps, high volume, tempos, pauses, supersets, drop sets, all these high intensity training programs that you probably don't even know about. A lot of you probably don't even know some of the crazy stuff that I would program in. If you compete with us, obviously you do, but you know, the, at the end of the day, you probably don't know most of these things because they're so crazy, the stuff that I have to rope in. If you really tax it to the point where you're walking out to your car, or I guess you're at home right now, you're walking out of your gym, and your legs are shaking, you wake up the next day, you can't walk right, you can't walk right for the next two, three days. Well, guess what? You don't need to be training your legs every day because you tax them, they're going to grow now and we're letting them grow. The people that will do the best in wellness are the ones that did that exact thing. They trained hard, they trained intense, they did the right exercises for their physique with the right sets, reps, and everything else, and then they recovered and they grew. And that's how you're going to get leg hypertrophy, that's how you're going to get you know hamstrings, quads, glutes, all that is going to come from doing that type of split where you got to train intense and then you got to recover. So really today I just want to kind of hop on here and talk a little bit about you know wellness and the division and everything that's going on, some stuff I've been seeing. Hopefully you got something out of it. You know, I want to say this too, even though we might not have any shows happening this weekend, next weekend, anything like that. 
The shows will be back, ladies. Keep training, keep going, keep working. Even if you're doing a little bit of an improvement phase, maybe you adjusted, now you're gonna do something later down the line this year. That's fine. Keep your mind focused for the stage. Keep training hard, keep eating right. Keep doing what you need to be doing to improve. And whether you got a show coming up, or you got one in six months, or whenever it is, whatever's going on, the stage will be back. It will be ready for you. And those of you that stay on track right now, and you get this stuff done, will be the ones that come out. You know, in the top five, in that first call out, winning these shows and having a great time. If any of you need help with your wellness workouts during quarantine, in the gym, anywhere else, we offer a free trial on my website. I really want to invite you to. TeamFFLEX.com. You'll see a pop-up. Just put your email in there. It's absolutely free. No payment information, nothing. And we're going to treat you just like a client. I will coach you just like I coach all of the people we work with for wellness free for the next seven days. It's absolutely free. If you have any interest in competing in wellness or any of the stuff I said today was interesting or you didn't think about or you want to see what I'm talking about, just go over there and put your email in. It's absolutely free. It instantly invites you over to our app where you can get set up. It's our private client coaching app. Nobody gets access to this unless they are a paying client or on the free trial. And so you can come over there. You can try it out. I'll show you. I'll teach you. I'll give you everything that I can just the same we do our clients. And hopefully either way, it's going to make you better. It's going to help you do better. And it's going to get you further for when you do come back to the stage so you can kick some ass in wellness. All right, thanks for watching. Please share it out. Please subscribe. I hope to see you on the other side in that free trial. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. This is First Callouts.